Hello everyone, I'm the Sexy Gaper, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Rise and Fall New Leader Spotlight, where today we're looking at Lautaro of the Mapuche. Uh, so Lautaro's unique ability is known as Swift Talk, and what it does is it makes it so that if uh, one of your units defeats an enemy unit within the borders of an enemy city, that city loses 20 loyalty. Uh, so this ability actually can be pretty good uh, in some situations, so... Uh, the main situation where it's really good is whenever you're fighting against enemy cities that are a little bit further away from their capital, so, you know, they're, they're not as strong in loyalty as something that would be, you know, like their second city right next to their capital. Uh, so Swift Talk actually can be nice, you know, you kill a unit or two, and next thing you know, the city flips to, uh, independent, and you can conquer it real fast. Uh, so Swift Talk, it's a pretty decent ability, it's, it's not bad, but it's, it's one that is situationally very nice. Uh, the civilization ability for the Mapuche is known as Toki, and what it makes it, or what it does, is it makes it so that all units trained in the cities with an established governor gain 25% more experience in combat. Uh, and in addition to that, you get plus 10 combat strength bonus against civilizations that are in a golden age. Uh, so Toki is it's it's a pretty decent ability as well, uh, much like Swift Talk. Uh, so the the uh, additional experience that you get uh, whenever you have cities that have an established governor is very nice because that'll make it so that you can heal your units by promoting them and you can also get your obvious uh, combat bonuses from your promotions faster, uh, which is always a nice thing whenever you're fighting wars against other people. Uh, and the plus 10 combat strength bonus against civilizations that are in a golden age is... Um, much like with Swift Talk, it is something that it is something <laughs> it is something that is situationally very good, uh, because say you're behind and someone else is in a golden age, maybe it's one of your neighbors, uh, you can declare war on them, start fighting them, uh, so you'll get that plus ten combat strength bonus, and you'll probably just tear through them and uh, be able to to gain some ground back if you've fallen behind. So overall, I think Toki is a pretty decent ability. It's 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 pretty good. It's it's nice towards a uh, a defensive domination. Um, sort of sort of play style um so that is the abilities of the mapuche so let's get into their unique unit so the unique unit for the mapuche in rise and fall is known as the malone raider and what it does is it is a unique cavalry unit that is unlocked with gunpowder uh, it does not replace any other units it has a melee strength of 55 uh, and it, in addition to that, it gains plus four combat strength when fighting within four tiles of friendly territory, and it only costs one movement to pillage with your Malone Raiders. Uh, so overall, the Malone Raiders are, they're actually, they're, they're just kind of okay, they're not really that great. Uh, the big weakness of Malone Raiders is the fact that you can't pre-build them. So, like, you can't just uh, spam a bunch of horsemen in the early game and then upgrade to Malone Raiders later. Uh, you have to straight up build them, which does kind of suck. Uh, and in addition to that, if you're going for, like, domination, so you're attacking, like, someone else that's pretty far away from you, uh, the plus four combat strength when, when fighting within four tiles of friendly territory, it's, it's not going to be all that consistently good. Um, the one movement to pillage actually can be pretty nice, especially if you just want to go and harass someone. Uh, so maybe you declare war on them, you send in a bunch of Malone Raiders, pillage all their tile improvements in their districts, and then just walk away. Uh, that that is definitely a strategy that you could do with the Malone Raider. Uh, but overall, they're they're definitely not they're definitely not one of the best uh, unique units in Rise and Fall. But they're definitely not one of the worst. As far as unique tile improvements for the Mapuche are concerned, we have the Chemomol, or the Chemomol, uh, and, and it is a unique tile improvement that must be built on a tile with breathtaking appeal, and it provides culture equal to 75% of the tile's appeal, and later in the game, whenever you research flight, it will provide tourism equal to this cultural bonus. Uh, and I think I forgot to say it, but it unlocks with craftsmanship. Um, so the Chemomol is actually a really good tile improvement. It's, it's one of the strongest ones, I think, in Rise and Fall. Um, because 75% of a tile's appeal when it has to be on breathtaking means you're always going to be getting at least plus three culture from your uh, from your Um And then later in the game, you know, whenever you're able to increase your tile appeal even further, like you can get up to plus four, plus five culture from a single tile, uh, which is actually pretty ridiculous if you think about it. Um, even in the early game, whenever if you if you're able to just plop down maybe two or three of these, uh, that can you know almost double your culture in the early game, or just give you give you a significant boost nonetheless. So Chemomol is a very strong tile improvement. The only thing that sucks is that uh, it is sometimes very difficult to find uh, tiles that you can build them on. So uh, if you get an unlucky spawn, you might not have very many tiles with high appeal. Uh, so you're just going to be out of luck with Chemomols. Um, but overall, a very good tile improvement. 
And now with all this in mind, it is time to go to the strengths and weaknesses of the Mapuche in Rise and Fall. Uh, so the first strength that comes to mind is that there are multiple play styles that you could definitely go about with the Mapuche, and there's multiple ways to play them, um, just because... Their unique tile improvement kind of lends them towards culture, but their abilities lend them towards domination. So you could either go like the really fast and aggressive domination game and, you know, start taking cities and just gaining yourself land and then going for culture or anything. Or you could just play a little bit slower, maybe you get yourself a religion and just build wonders and go for culture. Uh, so there's there's a lot of ways you can play as the Mapuche, and, and you can almost adapt to almost every... Uh, Every scenario you're going to be in in a game, so maybe something changes halfway through the game and you all of a sudden have to be aggressive, um, you definitely could. Or maybe you've been aggressive and you're ready to just settle down and start uh, spamming out chemicals. That's another thing you could do as well. So there's a lot of ways you could play the Mapuche, and for that reason, I think that's a definite strength of them. Um, kind of along those lines, they have a very good tile improvement. Uh, the chemimol is super strong, especially in the early game whenever it can get you just a ton of culture to just help you... Uh, speed through civics, and then later in the game, whenever you get flight, it pretty much functions as more seaside resorts, so that can help you just spam out tourism and get you that much closer to a culture victory, so uh, very strong tile improvement for the Mapuche. Uh, as far as weaknesses go, uh, one of the first ones that comes to mind is that there's no additional way to combat war, war weariness, so no golf courses. Um, <laughs> so if, if you are going to go domination as the Mapuche, one of the things that sucks is that you don't have like any unique tile improvement or district building or anything uh, that will provide additional amenities, so you are going to be stuck with combat uh, war weariness. Uh, so that's just something to think about. You could always just plop down a few more entertainment complexes and deal with it, uh, as most civilizations do. Uh, but it does kind of just suck that they don't have that, you know, that extra step to make them that much better in domination. Uh, and the other weakness of them is that is it is sometimes difficult to find tiles with high enough appeal for your Um So just along those lines, it's just kind of it, they're very spawn dependent on how good they can be in a game. Um, they, they, they do seem to have spawn bias towards hills and mountains, which is good because that uh, mountains provide a lot of appeal. Um, so a lot of the times it's not a problem, but sometimes you can get games where you just can't place down your chemicals. So pretty much most of your, uh, your options for your culture strength go away. Uh, so that's just something to think about if you're planning on playing the Mapuche. And finally, it is time to go to tier ranks. So the series is we give each civilization tier rankings in each of the four victory types. I ignore score. Um, so we just have domination, culture, science, and religion. And we also have an overall category that takes into account all four victory types, as well as other factors such as, you know, like ability to, to, to grow or versatility or uh, things such as that. So without further ado, let's get right into the tier rankings with the Mapuche. Um, so as far as domination goes, I think they are deserving of an A in domination. Uh, they, they, they have abilities that complement a domination play style. Uh, they definitely have the ability to go for a domination play style. Uh, the, the additional experience that their units can gain if, they, uh, if they've been produced in a uh, city that has an established governor is very nice for fighting other things. Uh, so for that reason, I think they are deserving of an A in domination. Uh, as far as science goes, I think they deserve a B, uh, just because they have that versatility to, to play slow, uh, and additionally, the spawn bias that uh, favors hills and mountains is very nice, because that gives you high adjacency bonuses on industrial zones and uh, the and, and, and campus districts. Um, so that can help you just, you know, produce some additional science in production to get you going towards a science victory. Uh, so overall, I, I think I think they do deserve the B in science. As far as culture goes, they are definitely deserving of an A in culture, if for no other reason than the chemicals being so good. Um, what I, they aren't, they definitely aren't deserving of an S tier because uh, I really wish that they did have one ability that would, you know, help their culture game. But unfortunately, they are both uh, domination focused in their abilities. Uh, but the chemicals are really nice. They can help you speed through civics. They can help you uh, bolster your tourism in the late game. Uh, and overall. Uh, you, 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 you do have the ability to play whatever playstyle you want, so you could play a slow culture game, you could play a fast culture game, anything you really want to do, uh, you could do it with the Mapuche, so for that reason, they deserve an A. And lastly, we have Religion, which I think they deserve a B in Religion, uh, much similar, or much similar, very similar to the reasons that I gave them for Science. Um, they just kind of, they have the versatility to play to play that style, they, so they could play the slow Religion game, they could synergize Religion and Culture, um, in any way, so uh, that would definitely be a slower play style for them, but you could uh, synergize with religion and culture, you know, have your religion get you more culture bonuses, and then, you know, just keep spreading your religion, and then maybe you'll either get a culture or a religion victory, uh, so either or. Uh, e e either way, they just have the versatility they need to play religion, and they're not necessarily locked into any, uh, you know, 
play style that would hurt religion. Uh, so for that reason, I think they deserve a B. And as far as their overall ranking goes, I think they are deserving of an A. Uh, just for no, if for no other reason than the versatility that they have to really, really do just whatever they want in a game. Um, they really don't have any things that negatively affect them in uh, like any way. Uh, so they definitely don't lose any points for that. And in, addi in addition to that, they have uh, sp they they are specialized towards domination and culture, but they also do maintain that uh, versatility. Uh, so so that's just a nice thing. Uh, you can pretty much put them into any situation you ever need them to be in uh, in any game, and they'll do pretty well. So for that reason, I think they deserve an A. So thank you everyone for watching. I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Um, if you haven't heard, we are doing a giveaway right now. One copy of Civilization VI, just the base game, uh, not Rise and Fall, sorry. Uh, but all you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel and leave a comment in this video or any of the other Leader Spotlight videos uh, just saying why you want to win the copy of Civ VI. So uh, if you enter that, good luck. But thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer, and goodbye.